Yes, I can see why the others have believed. Especially my romantic-minded nephew. I have not cared whether they recognize me or not. But you... Don't you know me? Where were you born? In Peterhof. Child, no doubt, of Nicholas II and Alexandra, his empress. And grandchild of Maria Tadorovka. You have taken a long time in coming to comfort my bereavement. I wrote you letters, but you never answered. Perhaps you never got them. I have received quite a few appeals from resurrected Romanovs. It seems the Bolshevik firing squads were very poor shots. Twice I started out to try and find you. Only there were many days when I did not know who I was. And now you too. You at least have accepted yourself. How long have you been an actress? It is in your own case, Your Majesty. From earliest childhood. First to be a princess is to be an actress, but not necessarily a good one. Perhaps I should have become a better one, if the curtain hadn't fallen to her. Oh, being flippant about a subject that you must realize is for me a great personal sorrow. Forgive me! I had forgotten for a moment that you would be regarding that tragedy as more yours than mine. I am trying to keep my courage. You are making it very hard for me. I have been without love for so long. Oh, come, come. Have there been no men in your life? The story of your rescue from the grave included a Bolshevik guard who had fallen in love with you and carried you from the shed where the bodies were awaiting burial? Yes, he rescued me. He took me to Romania. But he soon decided that a crazy girl was no great prize. A rescue from the very edge of the grave. Years of lost memory in an asylum. Excellent material for melodrama. Long, empty days, in which the consciousness of living came only through pain. That's hardly melodrama, Grandmama. I'll give you permission to call me that name. I'm sorry. It slipped out. I'll try to guard my tongue. You think my answer should be to grant you that privilege? A lonely old woman should be glad to hear someone call her Grandmama. My loneliness is as bitter as yours. You ask for my recognition. For love. And you do it well. Your eyes are moist, your voice full of feeling. But I can only reply that the love that you beg for belongs to one that is dead. You have chosen to deck yourself in the robes of a spectre, mademoiselle. And in so doing, have won endorsements from a few poor sentimentalists, dreamers, self-deceivers. But I am none of those things. The shell that was once my heart is not so easily pierced. And so you thrust me from you? I was told you would ask me difficult questions. You're not interested enough to ask me any. I was going to catechize you, was I? Is that what your business associates told you? They mean nothing to me, these men. Nor the millions of which they dream. Ah, but they have told you about these millions. Oh, yes, they have told me. And did you not say that a Romanov may be butchered, but may not be bought? That should have been your answer. If your blood were truly Romanov, you would not let yourself be a cat's paw for Bunyan and his crew. Tell me to whom these millions should be given. I will give it. Perhaps then you will believe me. Easily said. You must have the money before you can give it. And you cannot get it until you first obtain my recognition. Yes. You are hard. You are showing me your fighting face. Wounding words barbed like arrows. I remember hearing Father say that <coughs> you were the greatest fighter the family has known since Peter the Great. It was at the time 
you and Mother qu quarreled over uh, um, the necklace. Part of the Imperial treasure, but you wanted to keep it for your lifetime. I told you this. Oh, but there must have been plenty who knew about it. I spoke to him for a beginning. Alex aired all her grievances to him. You wore them with your last court dress. The red velvet one with the long train. Well, did you see my portrait? Or did, or did someone describe me to you? It is strange. I, I only remember the <coughs> large outlines or the little details. It was one of our worst quarrels. The winter palace. My private room. The snow falling outside the double window panes. Alex had herself announced formally by one of the lackeys. Her Imperial Majesty <laughs> fought to all me with a title that had been mine for many years. I was sitting by the fire, my jewel box on my knees. With that pompous nonsense, I didn't even get up. I didn't even trouble to get up. I don't know why I'm telling all of this to you. My mother, my father took the side of my mother. They even called in the Chancellor, and they were all lined up against you. But you kept Figgy's jewels. How did you learn to call the great Catherine's Figgy? We always called her that. And sometimes we'd give the same nickname to Marie, because she had such an eye for the men. Olga used to tease her. Stop! I forbid it. I forbid you to bandy those names. They are my sisters. I can speak of them if I choose. Imposter! You call me that! Yes! And I want it stopped. If you have any decency, I want you to end this masquerade. I will pay you. I will pay you more than those maggots. Go away! Leave me. I am offering you money. Go away! Please! Why were you not giving up for you? So it was not enough. To have suffered all that. The cellar, the asylum, the cruelty. It was necessary that I should also meet you again, like this. Excellent, excellent, tragic scene of despair. Oh, you are forgetting nothing, are you? How can someone who has suffered so much have so little help for suffering? I am sorry, mademoiselle, if your failure to win me over is such a cruel disappointment. Don't go.